the growth of cabinet system has practically resulted in the marginalization of the parliamentary supremacy elucidate you have to make it clear you have no option you cannot go against this opinion you have to substantiate this opinion with relevant facts with relevant figures that's what you have to do statement is given and there is no critical comment or anything it is elucidate make it clear support this with available documentation with available statistics with available facts and figures so elucidate means it is a fact it is understood it is presumed as fact you have to substantiate the growth of cabinet system has practically resulted in the marginalization of parliamentary supremacy in fact there are number of reasons for the marginalization of parliamentary supremacy very very important question we deliberated number of times in the editorial discussion also and you have to make it clear elucidate how to make a good beginning because the emphasis is on cabinet system so i am starting with that the cabinet system the council of ministers headed by the prime minister was adopted from the britain you can also write westminster system it is collectively responsible to the lower house similarly parliamentary supremacy can be understood as the parliament with the supreme powers pertaining to policy making parliament having supreme powers pertaining to policy making policy making is within the purview of parliament and now what is happening several ordinances and subordinate legislation that means without legislation things are moving by the executive so while framing the rules and regulations some of the times the rules are going beyond the remit of beyond the remit of the original legislation many things are happening and though the indian constitution envisaged separation of powers between executive legislature and judiciary in reality the separation of powers is a chimera you can say it is a dream it is not reality in reality executive decisions and policy making are decided by the prime minister in the states it is chief minister and the crux the heart is points to strengthen the view of this marginalization of parliamentary supremacy one point i have forgotten to include that is subordinate legislation that means the rules and regulations which are formed rules are formed by the executive the legislation is passed in parliament after that the rules are framed by the executive several times the rules framed by the executive are beyond the scope of the legislative laws many times it is clearly evident this also you can mention i have forgotten ordinance powers that means it makes the executive to decide the policies for example three form laws most important three form laws which has a bearing which have a bearing on the federal polity they were brought through ordinances and later on they were passed in parliament without much debate and once the something is brought through ordinance later on it becomes mere formality or rubber stamp to get approval from the parliament ordinance powers it makes the executive to decide the policies in advance and later on passed by the parliament it becomes just a reality or formality referrals to parliament committees decreased from 71% in 15th lok sabha to around 16% in 70th lok sabha at present it is 80th lok sabha i talked about subordinate legislation and you can see cbi that has no stand alone legislation so that's why it is being questioned several times several investigative agencies in our country don't have proper legislative framework they are based on executive decisions that's why they don't have checks and balances this also you can mention and first lok sabha sat for 135 days and now average 50 to 55 days another important aspect is the committee 
which was in fact uh, you can see here nc or wc that recommended parliament should sit for 110 days annually and even state legislative assemblies five days ten days in a year there are number of legislative assemblies what legislative business is going on they are just a formality rubber stamp you can say in many cases and whips you are issuing the whip and you are making the s men s women when whip is issued if they vote against they lose the membership and anti defection lies to be reviewed and another important aspect is constructive criticism that is not there in fact when the debates are going on in united kingdom ruling party members criticize the government they vote against the government they exercise their wisdom they exercise their conscience which is missing in india as far as the ruling party mps are concerned they never speak against the government bill they never speak against the government they never vote against the bill then what is happening their consciousness is totally lost conscience they are not using their conscience and no constructive debates the ruling party mps never criticize any bill critical decisions on national security are taken by the prime minister that is cabinet committee on security takes national security decisions and the parliament doesn't know it decisions like demonetization three form laws are taken by the executive three form laws was brought as ordinance first and this is the present state of affairs and finally what needs to be done parliament sittings number of days must increase important matters must be in fact referred to standing committees and the answer session in parliament that is questions and answers that session must have regular workings without cancelling them and important bills should be referred to standing committees constructive criticism should become the culture just like in uk issuing whips must go away and there must be separation between party and the government when there is separation between party and the government then the members of parliament can exercise their concerns now party and government are same if you are criticizing the government they may be expelled from the party so this is the peculiar thing you can say the indian constitution envisages the checks and balances by distributing powers to the executive legislature and the judiciary i am concluding this way if the parliamentary supremacy is not restored it erodes indian democracy directly or indirectly the onus is on the executive and legislature to restore the powers of the parliament right friends thank you